In the previous videos, we talked about how to use power iteration and some modifications to it to find eigenvalues and eigenvectors. The problem was is that that process kind of only worked for one at a time. And one of the modifications was to try and do a shift and find a different one that way. But even that had problems so that we had to kind of guess as to what the shift was or just repeatedly try different things until we found one that worked. The idea behind normalized simultaneous iteration is to try and find a way that will find all the eigenvalues and all the eigenvectors at the same time. Now there are some limitations on this. We'll get to those at the end. But here's the basic idea. I'm going to do a power iteration and I'm going to start, instead of with a vector, I'm going to start with the identity matrix. Then I'm going to try and do power iteration here. Now, if I just go ahead and start multiplying i by powers of my matrix, start doing a i, a squared times i, etc., like that, that should converge to something where all the columns are the same eigenvector. Because, well, basically what we're doing, the different columns of i are sort of just different starting vectors, really. And we know that the power iteration applied to a single vector converges to the eigenvector of the dominant eigenvalue. So we have to kind of find a way to prevent that from happening. But I'm still going to start the same way. I'm going to say AI is my first thing. Now by doing this, it's important to realize that I has orthonormal columns. AI doesn't, though. Kind of the whole shifting by A ruins the orthogonality there. By restoring that, we can get back to where these things will converge to different eigenvectors. So how do I do this? Well, this goes back to something we did back in the first semester a long time ago. We're going to take this and we're going to do a QR factorization on this. I'm going to call that Q1R for reasons we'll see in a second. Now, I'm not going to review everything about the QR factorization. We'll have to go back to earlier notes and things and figure that out. But the basics are that Q is an orthonormal matrix and R is an upper triangular matrix. As we go through this, Basically, we're going to keep getting a sequence of these orthonormal matrices. And the hope, again, under the right conditions, these Qs converge to the eigenvectors. The different columns of Q are the different eigenvectors of A. Further, the R, I said, was an upper triangular matrix. In an upper triangular matrix, the eigenvalues are always the diagonal entries. So at the same time as getting the eigenvectors, we immediately get the eigenvalues as well, or again, at least we're converging toward them. So how do we actually do this? Well, because this Q is, should be our next best guess as to what the eigenvectors are, I'm going to kind of keep doing this. So the next step is to say, take A times Q1. That's going to shift it away from more than normal. So we do a QR factorization. This is my next hopefully best things. So we'll say that A times Q2 is some Q3 times R3. And we just keep going like that. Okay, that makes sense. That's easy enough to do, assuming that we can do the QR factorization, and we had a good, efficient way of doing that. 
we can improve this a little bit by changing it to something we call, excuse me a moment, unshifted QR algorithm. It's very similar. I'm going to start with I, start with the identity, and the first step is going to be exactly the same. I'm going to take A times I, we're going to factor that as a QR. But then from there, rather than multiplying by A at each step for my iteration, I'm actually going to multiply by the R. So I'm actually going to take the R1 times the Q1. I actually take the and multiply in the opposite order, which of course with matrices is a different thing I get out. And then I do the QR factorization on this. Again, I multiply this Q by the R2. And so on like that. Again, under the right conditions, the Q3 will be converging to, or the Qs will be converging to the eigenvectors, and the Rs are all going to be upper triangular matrices, and the diagonal entries there should be converging toward the eigenvalues. So I keep saying that under the right conditions, how can we guarantee well they're actually pretty specific conditions here this whole process either one same conditions for both whether we use the normalized simultaneous iteration or the unshifted QR algorithm are guaranteed to converge when, well, the big one is that A has to be symmetric. Now, it is worth noting that this can converge if A is not symmetric, but we're only guaranteed to. It's the only way we know for sure that it'll converge is way A is symmetric. And the eigenvalues of A They have to all be distinct, and more than distinct, they all have to have different absolute values. We have to be able to say there's a strictly dominant one, which is strictly greater than the next, which is strictly greater than the next. We can't have something like both 5 and negative 5 as eigenvalues. Again, it's a fairly rigorous condition here. It doesn't happen all the time. There are certainly examples where it doesn't. But it's not completely terrible there. And A being symmetric, well, that's, again, a little bit of an issue there, though there are some ways around that as well. I'm not going to worry too much about those ways, though, because we want to improve on this whole process. One, certainly it'd be nice to relax these conditions a little bit, but even more than that, it would be nice to kind of work in some of the optimizations that we did for the power iteration. Doing the inverse power iteration actually is a faster convergence than the standard power iteration. So it'd be nice to get that kind of thing working in here. It'd be nice to be able to get the shifts because if we knew the thing was near some value, that helped us find it quicker than if we didn't do that. So it would be nice to get some of those optimizations into this type of thing as well. And if we can do that and kind of get the best of both worlds, both get the improvements we had before 
as well as getting all the eigenvalues and eigenvectors at the same time, that'll be a huge improvement over anything we've done so far.